Good evening. Good evening. Glad to see you all here tonight. Each week we get a few more people. We should meet again next Wednesday. No, this is our last Wednesday. It's not the end of looking at Jesus' family tree, however. Uh, we will look at Jesus as being the son of Joseph this Sunday, and then we will look at Jesus as the son of Mary on Christmas morning. So that will complete uh, the family tree of Jesus that we will be looking at. But tonight it says as we gather, as we unpack Matthew's genealogical history of Jesus, we find several scandals. For in his family tree are people involved in incest, prostitution, adultery, and murder. But our gracious Lord brought good from the bad, even going to the cross to include us. We are all prodigal children, now joined to the body of Christ, the heirs of heaven, only by the grace of God, to our members. So we pray to the Son of Scandal, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Could you please stand as we sing our opening hymn, the advent of our King.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Although Nathan condemned David, have struck down Uriah the Hittite with a sword, and have taken his wife to be your wife, Paul writes that although we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, when John baptized Jesus, a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. You may be seated for the reading of the psalm. Reading from Psalm 71, verses 1 through 12. This psalm, perhaps by David, reflects on a life marked by scandal and conflict. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and rescue me. Be to me a rock of refuge, to which I may continually come. Rescue me, O God, from the hand of the wicked. For you, O Lord, are my hope. Upon you I have leaned from before my birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb. My praise is continually of you. I have been as a fortress to misery, but you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Or my enemies speak concerning me. Those who watch for my life consult together. And say, God has forsaken him. Pursue and seize him, but there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. The, o, the great O Antiphon for this evening asks God for relief from spiritual darkness. O day spring, splendor of light everlasting. Come and enlighten those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Come and death. We now sing three verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, two from the actual hymn, and one that was specially written for this evening's service.
Although David had Bathsheba's first husband killed in battle, their son would be the great King Solomon. A reading from 2 Samuel chapter 12. Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul, and I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your arms, and gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if this were too little, I would add to you as much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord to do what is evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with a sword and have taken his wife to be your wife and have killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Then Nathan went to his house, and the Lord afflicted the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he became sick. David therefore sought God on behalf of the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. And the elders of his house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. On the seventh day, the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to us. How then can we say to him, The child is dead? He may do himself some harm. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba, and went into her and lay with her. And she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loved him. O Lord, have mercy on us. In our baptism, God's grace was poured out on us richly. A reading from Titus chapter three. For we ourselves, were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We rise for the third reading. For all of us in the body of Christ, the verdict on him, my beloved son, is ours by the grace of God. A reading from Mark chapter one. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate, ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. 
and a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. O Lord, have mercy on us. A responsory from all three readings. She bore a son, Solomon. Not because of works done by us. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Please be seated as we continue with the next hymn.
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. The text for this evening's message, again, is from the genealogy of Jesus. You may find it at the end of your service bulletin. Tonight we will be looking at verses 1, 3, 5, and 6. 1, 3, 5, and 6. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth. And Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon, by the wife of Uriah. This ends the reading of God's word. Most of you probably have never heard of Shannon Lanier, or if you have heard of him, you probably don't remember who he is. Shannon Lanier is a television news anchor of Houston, Texas. But he's also known for being the fifth great grandson of Madison Hamilton, a son of Scandal. Like many family trees, Lanier's family had a scandal in its past. And this scandal was in the closet of one of our nation's founding fathers. On July 4th, 1826, exactly 50 years after the signing of the Declaration of Independence, its author, Thomas Jefferson, died. His contributions to the new nation were many. Architect, agriculture, law, just a few of his interests. He had been governor, congressman, secretary of state, vice president, and finally president. The Louisiana Purchase and Lewis and Clark expedition both occurred during his administration. He was also the founder of the University of Virginia. He left a legacy that remains to this day. But in recent years, Thomas Jefferson has also been remembered for scandal. After the death of his wife, Martha, he began a relationship with one of his slave women, Sally Emmy. Their relationship would yield four children who lived to be adults, one of whom was Madison Hemings, Shannon Lanier's forefather. Now, all of Sally Hemings' adult children were eventually freed by Jefferson, but it was ironic that the author of the most famous document defending freedom kept enslaved for years those who were his own flesh and blood. In classic American form, Thomas Jefferson is the flawed hero, remembered for both his great accomplishments and for this salacious scandal. Now one of the interesting features about Jesus genealogy here in Matthew is the inclusion of women. Most Jewish genealogies did not include women. But more importantly, I think, it's the choice of the women included here. And instead of including the matriarchs that we would have said, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, 
Matthew includes four women who show us what kind of God our Heavenly Father truly is. Most family trees have similar scandals within them. But this tonight is unlike any other family tree because this is in Holy Scripture. This is God's special revelation about himself, about his son, about his plan for salvation. By intentionally including these four women, God shows us that no one is beyond the grace of God. Let's look now at some of these families and Tamar. Tamar had been married to Judah's son, whose name was Ur. But Ur had been killed by the Lord because of his wicked ways. Judah had promised to provide Tamar with another husband so she could bear children. But he didn't keep his promise. And so Tamar disguised herself as a prostitute and slept with her own father-in-law, Judah. And she bore twin sons from that tryst. One of those twins, Perez, would be an ancestor of Christ. The second woman listed in Christ's genealogy is Rahab. Rahab actually was a prostitute. She was a prostitute in the city of Jericho before Joshua and the Israelites marched around it and the walls fell down and the Jewish people destroyed the city and its inhabitants. But Rahab and her family were spared because she had saved the two Israelite spies from being captured. Rahab also became an ancestor of the Savior to come. Now Ruth, whom we have a book in the Bible for, Ruth did not have a sordid background like Tamar and Rahab, but she was a Moabite. She was a Gentile. And she would become grafted into this family tree by returning with her mother-in-law, Naomi, to Bethlehem after the deaths of both of their husbands. And then Ruth would marry Boaz, who was actually a relative of Naomi. Even, even David illicit relationship. Relationship with the sheep would lead to a second son after the first son died as punishment to David for his sins of coveting, adultery, and murder. The second son was named Solomon, who even though he was blessed by God with great wisdom, blessed by God with riches, Still, he followed his pagan wives into idolatry later in life. What the world looks at and sees as scandal was actually God at work, making things work out for good, even from the sins of his own people. He made their sins work out for the good of all people. Incest, prostitution, adultery, murder. This family tree has it all. Thomas Jefferson's descendants have been plunged into controversy that Sally Hemings' children were fathered by the former president. So when the family gathers together, the Jefferson family, who is welcome, who is legitimate, who is illegitimate? Well, those questions plague more than just the Jefferson family. Every person might wonder if he or she 
is worthy to be called a child of God and to be part of God's family. But the women included in our Lord's genealogy tonight say more about our merciful God than they do about the women themselves. You see, history is not the story about man's glory. History is the story of God's grace. And scandal is not something we just find within the deeds of our ancestors. As we sit here this evening, our own actions have darkened our lives and separated us from God. We are all prodigal sons and daughters who have rejected our father and our family of faith. We have sold our birthright for our appetite for sin. We have not hungered and thirsted for righteousness. We are no better than Judah or Tamar, Rahab or Ruth, David or Bathsheba, because we all share in their humanity and in their sin. But we receive the spirit of adoption so that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us on righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. What God the Father said of Jesus at his baptism in the Jordan River, what did God say? He said, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. What God said to his son Jesus, he declares to all his children in the waters of holy baptism. When you were baptized, God was saying to you, you, whatever your name is, are my beloved child, my beloved son, my beloved daughter. With you, I am well pleased. Family reunions are often tied to occasions for celebration and food, right? By the grace of God, we have been invited to the great banquet. We are the poor, the lame, the crippled, and the blind, not physically, but on account of our sin. But we see what kind of love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. By his grace, God has invited us to the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, the feast which has no end. And at this family reunion, there will be people from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. But it is a family reunion unlike most others you've ever attended when you consider all who are part of this family, part of this great banquet. There are liars and cheaters, thieves and adulterers, murderers and meddlers. There are con artists and drug addicts. There are the arrogant and the ignorant, the hard-headed, hard-nosed. There are the greedy and the needy. There are college students paralyzed by fear of the future. And there are older adults haunted by ghosts of the past. 
This family takes all kinds. It takes all kinds of people with all of their warts and bruises and scandals and closet skeletons and everything else from their past. We are all one family in Christ, united through Jesus' death and resurrection as we look forward to this blessed reunion in heaven with those who have already gone before us. This is the inheritance that we look forward to, an inheritance that is never earned, but is given only by the grace of God. Studying family genealogy can be a fascinating endeavor for people. But learning about Jesus' family tree is life. Because Jesus' family tree is our family tree. And ultimately, our family tree is the tree of Calvary on which he died for all of his family. And the scandals of Jesus' family tree show us that we too are children of God by his grace and therefore heirs of heaven. During what remains of this Advent season, what a blessing it is to remember that like Tamar, like Rahab and Ruth and Bathsheba, we are all part of this family of God's grace. Thank God for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please rise for prayer. Lord Jesus, Guide and protect clergy and lay leaders of your church. Enable them to lift people's hearts and minds to look beyond global pandemics, natural disasters, and political upheavals to see the eternal kingdom which you have graciously opened to all people who trust in you for life and health and peace. Bless those who till the soil, manage farms, transport supplies, and distribute food and clothing where they are needed. Son of David, Amen. Almighty Lord, give wisdom and courage to those who lead governments, command armed forces, and maintain order in society. Give them hearts to seek peace, so that warfare with neighbor states and civil strife within them give way to prosperity, health, and cooperation. Increase our faith to depend on your eternal promises of the better country that awaits us by grace. Son of Abraham, Amen. Jesus, light of the world, open the hearts of all who are burdened by their scandals and other past sins. Surround them with faithful people to tell them about your coming in human history to give yourself for them. Protect and guide all law enforcement personnel, first responders, health care workers, and counselors. Help them balance justice, mercy, and compassionate care so that many may have their lives repaired and hope restored. Son of Scandal, Gracious Lord, cared for by your adopted human father, Joseph, remember people like him, those who have been forgotten, whether dispossessed, incarcerated, or isolated for any reason. Remember not their sins and iniquities, but give them a sense of your abiding presence. Nurture in us all a love for your will, so that we obediently do whatever you ask. Son of Joseph, Amen. Servant Savior, Born in a stable to a lowly virgin, remind us again that you turn the world's ways upside down. Give strength to the weak, lift up the downtrodden, provide hope for the despairing, 
announce peace to the distraught, and proclaim eternal forgiveness to all burdened by their sin. Son of Mary, Lord Jesus, the people included in your family tree dealt with scandalous sin within and around them, and yet from them you graciously entered human history. Help us to see your grace at work in us, we who have been grafted into your family tree by baptism. Strengthen us to truly be your forgiven and adopted brothers and sisters. Son of Scandal, I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. We pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. And now may the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. Amen. Please be seated for the closing hymn. 